Well, that most certainly escalated and then de-escalated most quickly, didn't it? Talk about um, absurd moments in uh, militarized uh, nationalist histories. We interrupt your regularly scheduled brainwashing in order to bring you news, breaking news, a special segment of the almost daily Zencast, focused on curious, quirky, and quixotic news items that you may have missed during the last 48-hour news cycle. by me, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, and good night to you. Hello and namaste. Thank you for tuning in. It has truly been a really weird and wild and wacky ride in terms of global current events this weekend. Too much stuff going on to even begin to discuss uh, without spiraling out of control. But I did want to comment on the curious case of the mercenary uprising that would have been but wasn't. I, I struggled. I wasn't really sure what to call this. And I noticed that a lot of the talking heads were really unsure what to call it. Especially in the earliest moments. As they were in real time attempting to describe in their newstainment kind of way. The actions of a, a, a interna international a conflict profiteer. And ac uh, accused uh, international war crimes. Um, what's the what's the term? What's the right term to put there? War crimes perpetrator, uh, Mister Prokosian. I won't even try to pronounce his first name because I'm not. I can't. I'm not that cultured of an international um, linguist. Uh, and I don't have it sitting in front of me. I actually, the reason I don't video broadcast my podcasts is because half the time I'm like screwing up my face with my eyes closed, you know, like connecting to the flow of the words and struggling to remember specific vocabulary or name file cards. Um, proper nouns are for some reason a sticky, a sticky bunch that don't want to. Don't, even though I know them, I can be looking at someone's face in my recall image of this in, you know, in the image, imaging part of my mind um, and be unable to say their name. Um, much has already been said about uh, Comrade Progrosian's um, sudden, abrupt march towards the Capitol with grievances in hand, um, you know, a list, uh, a dossier of, oh, sorry for the object strike, um, a dossier of, of, um, of grievances. Uh, a lot has already been, uh, discussed. The things that stand out to me as a, a you know a casual um amateur observer of current events and the way in which live ongoing um current events are then reported on and mind you i'm i i'm spelling that out to disambiguate and to to point out for any dubious listener that i'm quite well aware that those are not the same thing 
Right. I try my best to not eat the menu um, in, to spite the meal here. Uh, and I don't pretend to be a journalist. So what I found was interesting, not only, I mean, it was obviously weird and fascinating that it was happening in the first place. Um, but not surprising given the history of saber rattling and and um inter party uh inter inner circle scuffling that is epidemic uh, in in the sort of common history of of uh the Russian state as, as it has existed under, under the rule of thumb of, uh, of comrade Putin. Um, and in America, it's a tricky thing to talk about because there are those who don't know anything or don't know enough. Bless their hearts. I'm, that's not a criticism. There are just those who have not had the time nor the interest nor the life experience journey that brings them to the doorstep of like having had the opportunity to know enough about real world history and verifiable facts and the, and the, the, the curiosities of the ways in which the media has reported on, on past events. But needless to say this trifecta of gentlemen, um, of powerful, self-described, self-made, real, tough guy, real men, um, who are categorical, uh, you know, by definition, you know, autocratic strongmen t- archetypes, uh, in the way that they function, in the way that they operate, uh, and in the way that they they wield the tools of top down authority uh, with brutal, vicious um, impunity, right? Sort of the exact opposite of what we supposedly strive for in a democratic republic of democracy. Um, And seemingly, it would seem, I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth and I don't want to, I'm most certainly not trying to falsely accuse anything. But given the last 30 years worth of history, confusing, flip-flop filled uh, rhetoric, historical rhetoric and commentary coming from the various sub-demographic pie slices of the grand old Republican Party, it would seem that there's some percentage, it would seem, I could be wrong, and it would be weird if I was really wrong, as people have insisted to my face, both in person um, and in, you know, within spittle shot, I think, God, uh, I avoided that. Um, uh, and also, you know, various, uh, means of online communications that, uh, you know, that people have insisted to me in many, uh, many different occasions of, over the past couple of decades, um, prompted and or unprompted. You know, as part of a natural flow of conversation or as sort of, whoa, I was out of the blue. Um, uh, that maybe, uh, you know, Putin's the good guy. And I find that kind of political pandering, that well, that kind of political simper, simpering, simping, um, not simpering, um, simpering for, almost works, uh, simping for, um, any politician, let alone a politician with a, you know, multi, 
decade record of uh, questionable at best and downright immoral uh, at hardest analysis, um, you know, actions uh, taken against, and especially in particular against those that would dare critique them, right? Um, sympathizers, which is the long term, the long form terminology from from which I think I could be wrong. We we might get one of the synthesis derivative um, origin words or pathways for simping. Um, they fascinate me in as much as that they will. It's, it, it would appear willingly bend over backwards, which to me is not an honorable trait. Um, it's a trait that displays an absolute lack of intellectual honesty. Uh, to bend over backwards, to rationalize away, excuse, deflect from, and or, you know, overtly try to, um, to, to, uh, uh, obfuscate or otherwise, um, distract away from, uh, a politician's, uh, wrongdoings, questionable choices, uh, mistakes, um, or outright, uh, you know, material plunders, uh, uh, of, of, of known, uh, moral, uh, um, corruption. I mean, it happens, right? Uh, now, I've been accused of doing that, oddly enough, um, when I really don't believe that I have. I have been asked and or told that I blind faithedly defend Biden. I don't remember when or where uh, I've done that. Uh, in fact, I've, I, I have often... Um, when it it comes up, uh, questioned and or openly criticized the guy, um, and when when he secured the nomination, um, you know, I asked, will he really be any different? Um, my my running argument, which which Trump supporters and curiously. Um, Supporters of the DNC at large, supporter of, of of leftist candidates, all generally sort of go, oh, I don't want to, let's talk about other things and kind of try to march right on past. Is that, you know, arguably, um, the, the two parties are as likely to be in cahoots with each other. And again, remembering that I don't believe any human endeavor and by that, I mean any collection of human beings endeavoring to work on any given task or collection of tasks. I don't believe that any group like that is a monolith of any one thing or another. And to think that way about them is is the height of naivete. Uh, I don't think I pronounced that word accurate, correctly. Nai nativity? Not nativity. Na naiveness? Naivity. To be naive... Uh, either either irrationally, uh, uh, unintentionally, or, or almost willfully, um, right? Uh, so there's a lot of hubbub about this thing in Russia, uh, and I, point, I I digress in that in that direction to, to to you know to bring it back over here. There's there's no reason to believe. There's no reason to be certain, right? And pin on the corkboard. I have issues with believing in things, especially in the realm of public discourse and uh, when it, in regards public discourse surrounding political uh, ideology, political problems, political process, 
political events, you know, politics at all. Um, Belief is a wild beast. Um, And I much prefer, like, verifiable, confirmable knowledge when it comes to mundane civics, right? When it comes to running our cities and towns and uh and uh and organizing our cultural policies and ideas i much rather deal with knowledge uh, and you know and and measurable verifiable confirmable facts so there's a lot we don't know and there's speculative uh you know, analysis and discussion going on about it. And what I find fascinating is that, you know, given given the context and the known history there and the plenty of room for the imagination to, like, fill in the gaps of all any and all unknown history that could be there that would fit the pattern of the known history, um, it's just as likely... So I find, you know, the although it's interesting to touch on and examine uh, uh, analytically, uh, you know, p- hypotheses in either direction, it's ultimately sort of meaningless in as much as that we, until we do know, um, I don't know what we get out of the discussion other than to be up to speed on this is the range of possibilities. But it's just as likely that the what everything that just went down was agreed upon and, and orchestrated by the gentlemen involved for the purposes of what? Unknown, but plenty of hypothetical, you know, uh, hypotheses can be, can be developed and can, you know, quickly come to mind given the broader context, i.e. Um, everything going on uh, between... Um, uh, Mother Russia and and daughter Ukraine, and uh, if I may if I may be so uh, bold as to as to coin that that terminology, um, and uh, the the really interesting part was, um, or the fascinating thing is that. There's so many possible outcomes, and uh, it it did evolve so quickly. I wouldn't be surprised if there's breaking news going down, even as I'm speaking right now into this recording, um, that I that will change and or you know completely alter the landscape of analysis. Um, but at a certain level. It felt authentic enough, um, given what I had seen building up to the this particular action, um, in that this this oligarch. Now, we need to step back and acknowledge, like, it isn't a formal system, you know, Russia's oligarch class of oligarchy uh but it works in a, it works in mysterious ways um and there's arguments to be had about which theory is most accurate uh that the that the individuals we see as power players on the world stage are actually front men and maybe even just puppet poster children for uh, like a hidden oligarchy class that are the you know the the true uh wielders of power um or not right uh but in its opening moments in terms of you know me sort of finding out about this through the various the the spectrum of typical outlets um
And given the history, right, of, of Mr. Prigozhin openly criticizing uh, the war and on occasion Putin's uh, Ministry of Defense brass, whoever the top leadership are, um, there was a sort of, this could be really real trajectory that made sense and 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 it wouldn't be i don't think the the one that might first come to mind that he was going to uh attempt to pull off uh, a military political coup and remove putin from power like that didn't doesn't didn't still wouldn't make sense if you tell if that's what we were being spun heavy-handedly, I'd, I'd be quite dubious of that analysis. Um, in as much as that, like, for all his grumblings and critique, he was a deep, deep, deep insider, right? And, like, member of the inner sanctum of of oligarchs, that are known to be close, trusted uh, inner circle members of inner circleness, of inner circle status. I mean, that guy, is it the history there is quite fascinating and weird, and the stuff of of espionage film and oh one of the uh, one of the thoughts i had really early on that i kind of meant to, to open open the show with is i bet you i'm not a betting man but if i had some money to play with and there was some action to put it on uh and and like make some money this would be an easy bet two things i'm fairly confident are already rolling in terms of somebody's make taking actions uh and and you know knocking dominoes down to get things started some kind of movie uh action thing inspired by this right uh in the sort of Inspired by true events, spectrum of of world military espionage uh, action venture. Uh, if that isn't already happening, I call dibs. <laughs> and and whoever you know, whatever studio wants to buy that should just sign me a big a big fat. Uh, signing check to make and let's make it happen. Um, somebody's already got an inside track deal though, I bet. Like, oh, somebody leaned over somewhere and like, you know, hit a speed dial button and had the conversation already of like, we're gonna, this, we're making this movie. I'm watching this for the rest of the day. Are we taking notes? Because we're making this movie. And I wish, I wish that was me. That I wish I was truly in that position. Other than, the, you know, adding it to my massive list of things I'm juggling. Um, and or drop everything to try to produce a manuscript in record-breaking time, which I don't, I don't know if I have, I have that in me. Um, but I digress. Number two, conspiracy theory content, both amateur and, like, professional and professional conspiracy theory content, I don't, I would argue, is not to be blindly trusted for all the reasons, the same reasons you, you, y'all don't trust other kinds of professional, quote unquote, content. Um, but pins on the corkboard, we've talked about that before. And I'm sure we'll have to, you know, focus on that and talk about it again in the not too distant future. And by that, whenever I say that, I mean, please do dig into the archive of episodes and, and hunt for these 
pins on the corkboard because the more episodes you enjoy, uh, the more the web of pins on the corkboard will resonate in your mind. Uh, and the more future episodes will have that resonance already, you know, available to your uh, understanding and awareness as an audience member as we move forward. Please and thank you. Okay, so... What I found really fascinating was that at first it seemed really, like, believable, authentic. Like, this guy who is arguably Putin's, like, secret ops, black bag, plausible deniability, right hand, you know, strongman guy, uh, body man, whatever you want to call it, um, illegal weapons dealer and uh, mercenary um, invasion force. He's... He's probably, arguably, a true believer, right? So, the, the thing that I found plausible and believable was that he was really trying to head back to rally to, it, like, in defense of Putin, argue, you know, with the argument that he has been misinformed and maybe even potentially manipulated um, uh, by those two uh, generals in the Ministry of the Defense that he, you know, accused of wanting to just enrich themselves and, 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 um, and go up in rank. Um, what I found fascinating was that he, he blatantly uh, decried and and you know and claimed that the invasion in Ukraine was was instigated on false pretenses and lies, right? And I thought that was really really bold thing um, uh, of him to say. Get, given his position, given his context, given his like, he's a like inner circle loyalty is everything. Um, henchman. Right? He's just a high order henchman with a lot of authority and his own army of henchmen. Um, either, and it, though, now, so as things evolved in the, in the first early like moments, there was this initial like really, you know, report of really strong, angry words. Now, obviously, I'm limited in as much as that I don't speak Russian. Um, so, there's always that issue. But setting that issue aside, and, and I get it, that, that I'm the first, to, to, like, when it comes to Bible thumping, I'm like, hey, have you read it in the original Aramaic? Or at least a really precise and unpoliticized academic direct to English or direct to your native language translation by non-religious linguistic academics because that's where it's at and if you haven't you don't know what you're arguing and you know that's turn that around on me right here um i'm relying on the the collective of various uh translative interpretations of what uh president putin has supposedly announced in his own, you know, using his own communications uh, systems. Um, now, in that spectrum of translators, let's acknowledge that there's the translators doing the translating there in, in at Russian State TV. Um, so presumably they're translating it into the words they want it translated into. Uh, from what I understand, from what I gathered in the... In the early hours of this 
almost potential would be it looked like it could be a coup, but maybe it was more of an a uh not an uprising, but a um like a rushing to defend in sort of like honor guard style. Although he ha Putin has his own you know, Roman imperial honor guard. Um and that's one of those levels of things where it's like you really have to figure out ways to establish and verify like the level of trust that you're granting those people uh with whom you are also uh you know depending the you know the security and protection of, of your own of your own well-being um so and that's got to induce some paranoid thinking right uh one of the many reasons if i may zoom out for a hot second that i'm glad that i don't live in that kind of society and that we have not as of yet allowed the the american um uh tendency towards the same to successfully uh uh attempt the the establishment of some kind of um legacy american imperial family uh regime right and it ain't it wouldn't be i mean from the beginning the the sort of awkwardness of this entire beautiful awkward place and its experimental uh founding documents is that from a cynical enough perspective and let's be real i'm talking about the united states and all that and it's establishing um you know all, all if from a big from a if you step far enough back and you put on cynical enough glasses it is a little bit like they were trying to in 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 a rebellion against living under the tyranny of a all powerful king they wanted to create a sort of shareable temporary kingship that they could also all you know ha you know as members of some kind of ruling class participate in multiple levels of access and kinship with um whilst distancing themselves uh and creating the plausible deniability now that's a very 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 cynical and i'm not claiming that attitude i'm just acknowledging that it's that it, it is out there and it has its seductive elements um but down that slippery slope is how we get to situations like um president putin uh puppeteering uh the belarusian president lukashenko um which le which so when okay i'm trying to like talk i was trying to walk through my different levels of of curiosity during this whole thing um i never i never feared that this was like oh snap is this is the the Russia Ukraine thing going to fall apart because of a internal dispute and and is and, and the whole thing's going to shift over to a uh Russian civil war? I thought plausible and maybe that's what if there is a sort of like you know false flag psych you out psych the westerners out sort of thing, you know, uh, political theater maneuver going on. Um the, you know, then they, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, when I when I was sort of like, oh wait, a little bit confused, was when he immediately backed down instead of doubling down after the initial wave of reactionary responses. Now. We didn't really find out about Lukashenko and his negotiating new terms until a little bit after the fact. That was on delay, right? But, um, I mean, as all of these things always are, duh. Uh, even when they're really fresh 
and hotly breaking. They they didn't just they, you know they happened a couple hours ago. The the meat of it happened an hour ago almost always, um, except for when it sort of happens to be happening live, which is a whole nother thing. But I digress. I digress. This sort of played out almost live, uh, but it, it it had its you know suspicious elements. Um, they re- they deployed really quickly the, the 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 Wagner group, which is an insider group, right? They are the like the secret arsenal that Russia uses to influence things uh, when it doesn't want to uh, use its own army. Um. And obviously the history going back, uh, not the least of which, you know, taking us back to the in the illegal and immoral invasion of Crimea, which predates all of this. Um, no, but here here's the fascinating thing, right? I was I was a little bit surprised at like the public denunciation at like you know, the prefabricated, pretextual, uh, false uh, uh, precursors for the, you know, used to to excuse starting this war. To, to now, I was like, oh, but it's interesting that he's, he's not throwing that accusation at, at the president. He's throwing it at, at the generals uh, with which he has a beef. Um, so the most realistic, plausible thing was that he was marshalling his forces t- in defense of President Putin in an attempt to expose the treachery of these two corrupt generals, have them court-martialed and removed, and pre- presumably so that he could then take over uh, at a higher order of like authority um, you know, and you know, as as not not just um, the go to guy that runs the Wagner Group, but you know, now a proper general or whatever that next higher level up marshal is. It um, I'm no expert, and I don't pretend to be friends. Uh, but where I was really intrigued was the softening of language and the offering of of this exile and how quickly he was like, Oh, okay. Now somebody's got to, and I don't know, right? Again, I'm no expert. I don't pretend to be, uh, a, a, an expert in the way, uh, this particular country and it's, you know, heavy hitting players operate. But based on what I have gathered over the years, over the decades, um, and obviously there's still time. I could get off this, this, you know, I could sign off from this recording and go turn on TV and find out that the, you know, something along these lines has developed, uh, and new developments are, are incoming. Uh, but, it is really weird and interesting that from the, and because they are all about like public engagement, controlled public engagement, but from the moment, I mean, from the moment that it was clear that precautions were actually being taken in Moscow, um, Putin sort of just like disappeared. There were reports that he was flying to St. Petersburg, I believe. And forgive me if I'm wrong about that city. Again, totally off the top of my head. Um, not reading from a script here at all. In fact, I'm just sort of s- staring into the middle distance of, you know, the space above my my device I'm recording this with. Um, so... The, so Putin, the generals in question, uh, Lukashenko and 
Prigany, whatever his name is. Um, owner, operator of Wagner Group, Prigozhin. Um, all just sort of curiously absent from public view. Now, the longer that goes on, the weirder it gets and the more questions will arise. And, and you know, why is, you know, one of the many reasons why I'm like, brace yourselves. There's going to be all kinds of speculative, wildly uh, hyperbolic and, 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 you know, beyond the scope of probable reality uh, uh, content that that's going to hit the fan. And, you know, not the least of which will be coming from Russia's own propaganda machines. Because let's remember, I mean, the three of these gentlemen at the center of this story are propaganda masters, unapologetic, like, yes, propaganda good, we love using it. Sorry, that was cliche. Um, and sounded more like, more like the, uh, the Muppet vampire count than um, any kind of television show fake Russian accent. Uh, but, I mean, there's reality to that. Um, so all of this could be truly elaborate subterfuge and, um, like, socio military political farce theater um you know propaganda theater for what and i don't know that that this has already been discussed out there i i'm not m mimicking anyone else's uh, discussion that i'm aware of i'm truly thinking sort of at that question right now like for what reason and i'm not saying that i know that it is uh, this or the other thing. This could have been a very, very honest, very authentic, very real moment of frustration and of like, uh, you know, political turmoil in this plutocracy, this kleptocracy, kleptocracy. Is it kleptocracy or kleptocracy? I think but I've heard both. Um, it's fair to describe however else you might want to, 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 to describe the form and function uh, of the modern Russian um, state. It, it, it is riddled with all of that uh, in, in, in many levels and many, you know, Swiss cheese holes of corruption. Um, as are a lot of places, uh, right? The, the world has got an issue. Human, the human species has a problem. Pin on the court board. Because the problem isn't what a lot of people might imagine it is. And it most certainly, in my assessment, not based on any belief factor, especially not programmatic, dogmatic belief spoon-fed to me by any other, uh, by any belief authority figure, but, but my own, like, Attempt at coming to, to credible Akram's razors, problem, you know, probabilistic assessment. Um, I, and I'm not going to pretend to know one way or the other. But let you know, it, if this were a really authentic maneuver uh, on everyone's part, um, Then you know it'll go down in history as a a, a curious day, where maybe Prigozhin saved Putin from the malicious negative uh, manipulation of the disinformation being fed to him by like that's almost plausible, in as much as that like the reasons given um, for the invasion have never really truly made that much sense and seemed pretty suspicious AF, all caps, from the get-go. From back when he was, bl and I mean Putin, 
when Putin was blatantly saying, according to the reporting, uh, you know, uh, that that I was able to review, that he was in no way, shape, or form intending to cross the border and you know bring his military into Ukrainian territory. He was just conducting exercises uh, with Belarus and along you know his defensive flanks on his own borders, etc., etc., etc. Um, but it's all, it is also, and this is the, the you know, the, the catch-22 irony of it all, uh, it is just as likely, just as plausible, that all of this was acted out, uh, you know, uh, faux, uh, drama of, of the, of the political theater kind. Where, where in which all parties involved w- were in agreement and you know in in cahoots in in in, uh, in compliance with each other in what's the word that compliance is close in complicity with one another about it and all of it was was you know engineered saber rattling for the purposes of what. Um, and here's where I, I would posit my guess, and I don't know if others have already. I mean, it, I wouldn't be shocked at all if others are out there already saying this because it's it's a logical conclusion. One could see, the, imagine this as a way to engineer the long discussed, elusive, uh, engineered off ramp to for Putin to pull out of the war that he refuses to call a war, the invasion he refuses to acknowledge is an invasion, and to blame it on this this scapegoat that he feigned a little fear about. Uh, but then it turns out, you know, can thank, well, thank you for, for uh, you know, exposing the ambition of these two corrupt generals in the Ministry of Defense. Uh, And this sort of tidy circle can get created uh, where everyone can get paid off to be a partial fall guy. And, you know, one of them goes, lives in in exile in a mansion in Belarus. And, you know, the, the generals go live in exile somewhere far away in Russia that's far away from Belarus and you can imagine all kinds of you know destinations that qualify uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. and they can back the f out of Ukraine cut their losses um and and even you know explain away uh any any negotiated uh, return of of stolen territory um, and have a sort of like, it wasn't Putin's fault, uh, exit strategy, right? Now, if that's where I'm at with it, and, and I don't know that anyone else is, uh, is, is quite articulated this nuanced of a thing, I, I could be wrong. Someone could be saying this exact same thing somewhere. Um, but in the in the in the the reporting that I've scanned, and I was looking, you know, I was avoiding the sort of talking heads, babbling talk, and really looking for like where's the facts and figures about it. Um, one of the, the final details that I found really interesting was that according to some reports coming from some from some sourcing that I don't have in front of me, um, and you'll forgive me if I'm wrong or if this turns out to be inaccurate reporting, but I heard tell of, um, you know, mercenaries in the Wagner group who expressed frustration at the abrupt decision to double back 
and and retreat away from from this you know march on on the capital uh and that there was disgruntled there were disgruntled Wagner um you know voices uh and I, I don't know any more detail than that but that's an interesting thing um will this unfold now here's the here's the concern if it's fake if it the if if the events of this sort of pseudo uh mercenary strike as in like they were refusing to do the mercenary work more than they were attempting they weren't attempting to invade moscow right like it although some said it that could be what they might be doing because we we don't know um from what i understand to be mr Prokosian's own declarative statements about it they were going to expose the generals not try to take over the country um now if it's fake the thing to worry about is that it's an excuse or a bridge a pretext for something worse than creating a a a face saving off-ramp for Putin out of this conflict in Ukraine. Um, I, and I don't even want to give credence to any ideas or even, uh, begin to give imaginative life to any ideas. Pin on the corkboard as to why, right? Like the more we be, fear things or believe in things, the more likely we kind of help invoke them in a collective way, I think. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but I think... You know, it, it would make sense why they want it as an argument as to why there's so much marshalling of group thought. But I digress. Um, if it's real, if all of this is real and c- kind of confusing and chaotic, then the concern there is, you know, as just as much as like what might have happened if they had not backed down, um, what's going to happen in the r- retribution, reaction, revenge uh, you know, seeking of justice phase, you know, and is there going to be a couple of rounds of Putin, you know, quieting the the beast that he created? And that's where I got to leave it, folks, because I don't know what else to say and Mother Nature is urgently calling. Thanks for listening. And that is the latest news breaking news. We now return you to your regularly scheduled brainwashing. Thank you for listening.